What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be going over SAT math tricks to get a 800, yes, a perfect score on the upcoming SAT. Yes, this channel has a lot of CS content, but I do also wanna bring back some of the SAT content that a lot of students are watching this channel for. Without further ado, let's get straight into the tips for this SAT video and let's talk about practicing mental math. This is the first tip, right? Practicing mental math is probably one of the most useful skills you can have for any math course, not just SAT, but even for calculus, um, algebra two, geometry, advanced calculus, linear algebra, even my college classes, being able to do mental math has helped me so much on exams, classworks, homeworks, quizzes, and projects. So the question is how do you practice mental math? Well, the best thing you can do is take an SAT exam you've already taken before and try to redo the problems, but all mentally. Don't even use a pencil. In fact, I don't even want you to pick up your pencil or if you have to use a pencil, only use it to circle answers, okay? And if it's an online test, then you definitely don't need a pencil. Just click the answer that you think is right and move on. By doing this trick, yeah, so you already know the answers, you know, because you took the test already, but you're able to think about the math to get you to that answer. And that will help sharpen your mental math skills, even though it might seem kind of weird because you already know your answers. So it might be like, am I cheating? Well, you're not actually cheating. Trust me, you are helping your brain. This is a trick I did a lot. Honestly, what I would do before the SAT is like the week before, I would take exams that I already took, one, to boost my confidence, and two, to practice my mental math, because then when the SAT actually came around, I was literally doing half the problems in my head, and the other half, like, just looking at it, boom, I did it. See, when you do SAT math, the thing that is so good about it, especially if you're good at it mentally, is once you're at that level where you're able to do the problems mentally, you eventually start thinking about the problem in the way the test creator thinks about it. Like, I remember on the SAT that I took, after I completed my SAT, and honestly, as I did the SAT non-calc problems, what I would start doing, since I literally didn't pick up my pencil, like for most of the exam, for the SAT non-calc at least, what I would do is I would start thinking like, hmm, I wonder why the test creator, why college board put D as this answer? Why did they put C as this answer? And once you're able to start thinking like the test creator, you're able to find all the pitfalls and traps they set for students to find. And if you're able to detect them, then you won't fall in them and then you're safe. Now the second tip is productive study. Productive studying is probably one of the most useful skills you can have as a student in general, because no matter what area or major your college major is, you will need to be studying, right? No matter what profession you're trying to go into, studying is a must and being able to study productively is a big thing. So for the SAT at least, how do we productively study? Do we just do a bunch of problems randomly with no distinct order? Do we just do as many passages as we can, as many practice tests, take all of them? No, that's not productive study. The first thing you need to do is use Khan Academy. Set up an account and you want to do every single subtopic problem on the SAT in order. This will help you stay organized and you're not gonna be jumping around SAT math topics where you're maybe doing linear equations one day, circles another day, triangles another day, and you're not actually retaining any of the information because at that point you're not only studying but you're wasting time studying. So you're not even productively studying. You matter of fact, just go play basketball or soccer outside because you're not doing anything inside by just jumping around topics. And as you do these problems on Khan Academy or you take practice exams, one thing you have to distinguish is whether you make a silly mistake or a conceptual mistake. And this is probably the thing that helped me the most when I was going over the, my SAT math exams that I took. I would go through and see how many problems I got wrong through silly mistake errors, like maybe I said seven plus three is 11 instead of 10, or after conceptual errors where I was like, hmm, I didn't know how to, um, solve for v in the volume formula or i didn't know how to foil properly a silly mistake is different like what i would usually do is when i would cover the non-calc problems like all 20 of them say i got two wrong if one of the problems i got wrong was a silly mistake i would count it as right because i know i will not make that silly mistake again after i review it and this tactic actually helped me a lot because like i said seeing that you got 19 out of 20 maybe even 20 out of 20 on non-calc is a good confidence booster even though it might not be 100 percent accurate if you make a silly mistake, just bet that you won't make that mistake again. Make sure you understand what your silly mistake was. If it was, a, for example, an addition error, then be like, all right, next time, I'll make sure I add slowly. Now, if it was a conceptual mistake, I would actually sit down, learn about the topic, and do various problems on that topic only. And then I would be like, okay, I understand this concept. Now that I know the concept, I won't make the same mistakes ever again. See, by analyzing mistakes, you're basically preparing yourself for the future. Speaking about the future, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Dogami. 
Dogami is an upcoming NFT collection that is pretty cool because it is expanding into the metaverse with its very own petaverse. Yes, it's like the metaverse, but for animals and dogs. And it's really cool because for all the animal lovers out there or people who like nature and just love, you know, wildlife, it's a pretty cool project to get behind. I personally am behind this project already because I really think it can do something special since I've never seen a project like this. The community is very active, has a lot of jokes going on, a lot of memes about it, and it's also spreading the word about itself very fast. It has very good reactions on the Discord. And like I said, an active community usually means it's a good NFT project. So I would highly recommend checking them out. The Discord link is in the description below. Now moving on, another big SAT math tip is to learn the SAT math trick. You see, there's a couple of SAT math tricks that you can learn, right? For example, negative B arrays are some solutions, C arrays are product with solutions. When you're trying to find a equivalent expression, just plug in zero to everything and see which answers match up. Like those three tricks I just shout out really fast that may have gone over your head or you may have understood. These are tricks that you have to master so that you can finish a 30 second problem in like 0.2 seconds on the ST math non-calc and calc section. Now I understand finding these ST math tricks like that I just mentioned or the numerous other ones out there can be very hard. In fact, unless you're a math whiz or Albert Einstein reincarnated, you're probably not figuring out the negative B arrays of some of the solutions, unless like your math teacher told you, or you know, maybe you had a ST tutoring class but otherwise, if you want to learn all these ST math tricks, then be sure to check out my notes in the description below where I have all the ST math tricks compiled into like a 25 page note sheet. And if you don't like reading and you don't like notes, well, you gotta like reading because ST reading is definitely something you have to take. But let's say you want someone to guide you, then I do have Smart Minds Tutoring, which is my tutoring company that offers premium ST one on one tutoring that will help you get your SAT score that you want. But yes, don't be afraid ever to seek help outside of like school, outside maybe your parents, and seek like out, so outside resources like this YouTube channel, for example, and all the old videos I used to post about the SAT. Use these videos, use my SAT math notes, take some tutoring to make sure that you understand everything about SAT math, especially use Khan Academy, okay? Personally, I never had tutoring, right? I literally just used Khan Academy, it's all I did and it helped me get to where I am today. So honestly, use Khan Academy, rehearse these ST math tips, and let me know which tip was your favorite, and let me know when your next SAT is. Thank you all for watching. Check out Dogami.